it is to me like it is coming today. Coming to the college in the days, it was a way ahead of its time. I do remember walking into the front foyer and I just thought to myself, it all looks so bright and new. I found the entire environment fabulous. The best thing about the Falkirk campus, the, the camaraderie among the, the students and the, the lecturers who couldn't do enough for you. There was no problem in terms of, uh, you ask a question, you would always get an answer and uh, without any shadow of a doubt, it must have been the right answer when I managed to come and work here eventually. <laughs> In my time here at the college, um, at Falkirk Campus, I, I've had contact or worked with four, four principals. Uh, my first principal, or contact with the first principal was Dr Easton, back in the early 70s. Um, a, a great man, uh, encouraged people to work to high standards and was great for the college and great for the staff. Dr Easton was probably the one that I'll remember the most, probably because I was younger then. Uh, but I remember as well, my first year here, uh, during the summer, it gets warm. At that time there was no students in the college at the summer, it was a total shutdown for six or seven weeks. And oh, just a young laddie, just left the school, so I lay out the back beside the weird blocks during my lunch hour with my t-shirt off. <laughs> and at the end of my lunch break I went back up the stair into the science and a phone call came up to the senior technician up there that the doc wanted to see me. What have I done? What have I done? So down I went and as he looked at sitting behind his desk, his glasses hanging on the end of his nose, looking over, there's me standing shaking like a leaf, wondering what I'd done. He says, do you think this is some kind of holiday camp you're in? <laughs> me going about without a t-shirt on. <laughs> so I learned from that day. <laughs> but one of the sort of funnier things I can remember was the very first year I was in here. The principal was Dr Easton, who was a kind of older fashioned guy, if I can put it like that in inverted commas. <laughs> and one of the things he always did was that at the end of the, the teaching year, the week before we broke up for our summer holidays, he always had a full staff meeting along in the assembly hall. And of course this was a kind of feedback meeting, you know, where he kind of had his wee resume to the staff about how the session had gone and how things should look for the following session. Um, at that time, in 1972 when I started in the college, the college had bells that they used to ring at the start and finish times of 9 o'clock in the morning, start to change their classes and things like that, break times and lunch times and so forth. And <clears throat> it, as part of this talk, this was the first time that I'd been at this and I was a wee bit uncertain as to what it was going to be about. So I was basically listening and learning. And I can remember that Dr Easton was kind of knocking the staff a wee bit in his talk about their timekeeping and not observing the start and stop bell times. And of course, there was a wee bit of shuffling of feet, as there always is, you know, when the staff get knocked a wee bit. And at the end of his talk, I can remember there was one of the staff, I think he was from the building department, stood up and he says, do you know Dr Easton? He says, I was a prisoner of the Germans during the last war. And the only difference between the Starlag and Falkirk College was they let you go home at night. <laughs> At which time there was complete uproar, <laughs> you know, and of course that, that more or less brought the meeting to an end. <laughs> Sometimes if you were in the workroom, your phone would ring and the voice would say, the principal here, come down and see me, and your stomach would do, you know, the old cartwheel, what is it, what's happened, what does he know, <laughs> what has he found out? And I mean, it was it was terrifying, really. I mean, I, I'm quite I, people don't terrify me. Never have done, but he did. He was the one or the only one. And yet, he and I got on fine. I mean, he lived around the corner from me, and uh, you know, he he never. I can't say he ever did anything but, but help me. You know, the Falkirk campus. I mean, when I first came in in '72, um, it was a, a big experience to come here as a 16-year-old. But um, always very warm, friendly. Uh, good staff, you know, good people, just a nice place to be and always a buzz about the place and I don't think it's changed even now. We had lots of good fun, lots of good fun. Uh, a lot of happy memories, um, both as a student and as a member of staff. Uh, I remember as students going out in the common room and playing the football machines, 
working with the, the metal comb to get a free game. Uh, and even the camaraderie that used to go on with staff in the different nights out, quiz nights, uh, Christmas parties, all sorts of stuff. Really, a lot of happy memories. I made a lot of good friends, uh, learnt a lot of new things. Uh, eventually I went on to be in the Students' Union, uh, done that as well. That was eventful. <laughs> But uh, yes, I thoroughly enjoy it. I look back, in fact, every time I don't stay in Falkirk now, and my wife and I pass by this place at least once a month, and I'm always saying to my wife, I was one of the first students that was in there, and she says, here's all our yesterdays coming again. So yes, I did enjoy my time here. As uh, a student in Falkirk campus, uh, it has very many happy memories for me, uh, no question. There are still people who were students with me at that time, that I keep in touch with. The Falkirk campus here is very important to me on a personal basis, I suppose on a family history basis, because A, I've been a student here, I'm currently working here, my wife has attended college here, and so have uh, two of my sons and three of my daughters. So it's played quite an important part in my life. Well, the reason they built the college in the first place was it was needed uh, to coordinate all the small uh, independent uh, training establishments that were in college, the small schools uh, of construction and business and so on. And even now it's crucial to the well-being of education in central Scotland because it, uh, it draws from many of the industries around here. Well, the, the building was basically the building that we're in. There was the extension that we got, you know, on the, the east wing. That happened not all that long after we was here. Um, then we moved into Middlefield. The weird blocks got built. You know, the college appeared to be growing like Topsy. You know, as more and more courses were coming along, uh, more and more full-time courses especially came along. Um, you know, in the early days, I mean, I think Dr Easton thought, was quite proudly thought a lot of his college, but he always had a wee bit of a battle on his hands trying to get approval from the SEV in Edinburgh to deliver and run full-time courses because they kind of regulated that and they kind of dished these courses out to the city colleges, you know, the Glasgow, Edinburgh colleges, the Aberdeens and the Dundees. They tended to be the colleges that got allocated the full-time courses and I felt Dr Easton always had a wee bit of battle on his hands trying to get them to believe that his college was good enough to do this. You know, and I think latterly that all came to fruition. He plugged away and plugged away, you know, and eventually he got a lot of full-time courses, which did an awful lot for the college and brought a lot of resources to the college and contributed a lot to the expansion. I studied on the first floor of the college campus in the secretarial wing, as you would call it, which was quite interesting because there was one room which had a word processor and that was half a day out of the whole two-year course back then. Uh, we started off with manual typewriters and then we progressed in the second year to electric typewriters which we all thought was the bee's knees. Uh, we had all the typewriters sitting in, it was regimented, it's not like nowadays when it's all open, it was all regimented in rows and we all sat there um, getting our knuckles wrapped for looking at the keys. The cruise that's sitting behind me represents a lot of the Falkirk area. The college being one of the most important education establishments within Falkirk. The plate we see before us has the following representation shown in it. Mining by the pick and the two pieces of coal, electrical with the flashes of electricity. This is the key one, we'll come back to that. This one is representing the foundries, the molten metal. This one representing chemistry. This represents building, you have a trowel and a brick wall and you have the sort of mechanical side of things with the cogs here. This one represents study and learning, which is really what the college is all about. When the college has changed name, or the college changed name, the, the plate was taken down and it was going to be skipped. But some four janitors with foresight decided to keep a hold of it and it was put in the storage. Then about a year and a half ago, maybe Trevor Griffin and myself, as technician in creative industry, discovered it and we thought at the time, that can't go to the skip. We need to keep that because that covers part of the history of the college and also the area of Falkirk itself. My funny story, a former colleague, David Beveridge, the caretaker, um, on my first day here when I started on reception, 
um, gave me a hard time as David always did because he had a knack with the words um, and he just said to me right you're new and you need to know where everything is so he took me down to college by the hand and showed me every nook and cranny but it served me well because I was always able to give directions. <laughs> as a student I was like every other student. <laughs> I had to be there, I had to do it. If I could sneak off I would like you know but it was difficult in those days because things were a lot more formal. When you were doing your day release, you had to be there because they would tell your boss if you weren't and then you'd lose a day's pay, obviously, and be punished and sometimes in other ways, like, you know, so you had to attend, like, you know, but it was a great and I thoroughly enjoyed it, met a lot of nice people, made good friends here, like, you know. The past 50 years have demonstrated that the college has contributed a considerable amount to the education and well-being of central Scotland and beyond, because you've no idea how far our students go. Well, the longest principal I had that I worked under was Dr Easton. Uh, he was, I think he was a kind of quite straight-laced person in many respects. He, he didn't like the sort of male members of staff not standing in front of their class without their tying their jacket on. <laughs> If he caught you at that, you were <laughs> in his office. <laughs> uh, I can remember not long after I started here that uh, trouser suits became quite fashionable for women. And the first woman he caught, walk, the first member of the staff he caught walking the, the corridors in his trouser suits, she had her in an office to suggest that she wasn't properly dressed. But I can also remember when I started here in the teaching staff, there was about four or five members of the teaching staff wore the kilt every day to their classes. He had absolutely no problem with that. <laughs> you know, but he, he had a definite problem with the women wearing the trousers. 